I'm uh, Scott Gress, I'm co-founder of the sales company, actually, we changed our name. Uh, we're a Node.js development company based here in Austin, and we're the authors and maintainers of the open source Sales.js web development framework for Node, uh, as well as the Treeline online IDE for sales and some other things. Uh, and I'm here today to talk about our goal of democratizing development. Uh, so first off, I want to speak really briefly about what democratizing development means to us, and then we'll see how Docker fits in with our vision for that, and I'll give a little example of what I'm talking about. So to put it super simply, uh, when I say we want to democratize development, I mean lowering the barrier to entry so that anyone who wants to make software can do it. I mean providing the right tools to allow anyone to be a developer. Uh, I've been a developer for a long time, and I've used a ton of different languages and tools. And all the while, what I've really been working towards in my career is this. This is the big red button. You press it, and it does all the things. You write your program, does your homework, makes you a sandwich, whatever. It's a, it's a little bit of a ridiculous metaphor, but to borrow a phrase from our former president, the arc of the universe bends towards the big red button. Um, every iteration of programming tools is a way to get more done with less typing and less arcane knowledge. At the sales company, we built Sales.js, which is a web development framework, so it's kind of sitting right before those question marks, and uh, it takes a lot of the work away from you. It automates a lot of building a web app, but there's, there's still more that can be done. So what's, what's the obstacles to that big red button that automates all the things? Um, there's a few. When I first started out as a, as a web developer, I started out like a lot of people probably did, pretty much as an HTML coder. And uh, you very quickly learn as our previous speakers were talking about, about cross-browser issues. You know, something works in Firefox, doesn't work in Internet Explorer, and it's a real pain. Um, to some extent, web standards have really mitigated that. I mean, not completely, but they've come a long way towards, you know, the headaches of the past not being quite as bad as they were. Um, so then you move on from being a front-end developer and start doing a little bit more back-end, and you think that that, that rage is going to dissipate a little bit. And... Uh, then one day you're writing a PHP script and you think you did a really great job and you upload it to the server only to find out that the uh, server has different libraries compiled into its PHP than you do, and then you want to burn your house down. Uh, I often found myself wishing that I could just be developing for this. This is a PlayStation, uh, actually a PS4, and the thing about the PlayStation is that everybody's got the same one. So if your game works on one PlayStation, it's going to work on everybody's PlayStation. Maybe not that one. Um, but I think you can probably see where I'm going. As far as back-end problems and, and mismatching in your, in your environment, that's, that's what Docker is for. Um, you can guarantee that your development and production environments are the same. So in a way, it kind of turns any computer into a PlayStation. All right. Uh, end of the day. So now that we've got our environment democratized a little bit, that's the basic level we need to not maybe go insane. But it's kind of like the food level of Maslow's pyramid. Like, once we fulfill that need, what are some higher needs that we can start thinking about? What about democratizing our programming language? What about our developer tools and our setup? You know, can we get to a place where any person with any kind of computer can download and install the minimal amount of software and get started building apps without knowing even any particular language? Well, the answer is a very resounding kind of. You know, the answer, I, I think, is yes. We need some technology to catch up, and that's what Docker is working on, and that's what you know, we at the, the sales company have also been working on. Uh, Treeline is a product that we developed uh, that's a development tool on top of our web framework that lets you build Sales.js apps visually without having to write a lot of JavaScript. It replaces the code with a, a visual interface. You got a little demo here. And it's basically you know, taking parts out of your little toolbox and stringing them together. You know, instead of writing code for finding a user or sending a message with Twilio, you can kind of, um, and, and knowing what those APIs look like and how to parse that data out, you just put in the inputs to these machines and let it kind of handle all the code for you. It actually writes the sales app for you. So we've got a, a step towards that, that big red button. But we can, we can still go a little bit further. You know, there, there's something in between that's still missing. And, and what I would describe that as 
is kind of the, the manual labor almost of development. It's getting Node running on your system. It's installing databases, installing dependencies that are specific to your app. It's using the terminal to start and stop apps. And I'll tell you, every time when I was doing tutorials and videos for our TreeLine product, every time I had to go into the terminal to type and do something, I felt like a failure. It felt like I was walking in the dirt when I was trying to lift people up and kind of float along towards development. Um, and I'm not, I'm not inventing problems here because a lot of the questions that we got from you know, customer service questions using that product were around things like installing Node and, and typing in a terminal and using sudo for when you needed administrator privileges and stuff like that. So again, a lot of the, this kind of stuff, you think this is what Docker is for, and that's very true. Uh, but you still have to know how to use Docker in a way, which might seem like a nitpick, but I don't want to just kind of lower the bar for people. I want to destroy the bar. Uh, why do I want to do this? Well, there's a few reasons, but we, as Treeline, when we built our product, we, uh, we went through a, an accelerator called Y Combinator a couple of years ago, and we were there with about 100 other companies, and what quickly became really apparent, even though not all the companies were tech startups, is that all, so all companies are software companies. Everybody there had a software problem that needed to be solved, and there were not enough developers to do it. And the reason that there weren't enough developers, especially on the back end, was that there's this prevailing feeling among people that you have to be some sort of genius to do this. Um, and I'm not saying that tools like Treeline or anything else are going to make everyone a good developer or even make them interested in a developer any more than giving everybody a typewriter would make everybody into Ernest Hemingway. But there's people who can and should be doing this kind of stuff that aren't. And it's not necessarily the answer to just get everybody to start coding when they're five years old or send everybody to code school. There's, um, I think that writing code is going to be a smaller and smaller part of development going forward. So building a path to that big red button. There's technology we can use right now that can, we can really do some interesting things with. There's Docker, obviously. There's uh, a tool called Electron that lets you build cross-platform apps. And there's the, the Treeline tool that we developed. And there's, there's other tools, too. Um, it's not going to get all the way there today. I'm just going to show you a kind of a, a demo of an example of something you can do. But hopefully, it'll give you an idea of what I'm talking about. Um, for inspiration, we can look at Kitematic. Uh, Kitematic ships with Docker for Mac. Um, I don't know if you all have used it, but it's a really great app. It's like a, a front end for your Docker containers and images that lets you kind of fool around with them without necessarily having to go into the terminal to do all the commands. Um, we're also, like I said, we're going to be using Electron, which is a cross-platform cross development tool that will compile Node and front end JavaScript apps uh, for Windows, for Mac, you know, for anything. Um, Slack uses it. Kitematic, again, is built in it. Um, and it's a, it's a really interesting tool. So demo time. Always fun to do the live demo in front of people. Um, I'm going to just switch this off into uh, mirroring mode, and we'll see what we can see. It's going to go black for a second here. And OK. So I, I cut a couple of corners here just to save time and you know make it more likely to not crash and burn for all of us. But I'm sure there's still plenty of things that can go wrong. Don't worry. So here's my, my zero desktop. Everybody admire. Just has the one thing on there. And this is the Treeline app. Um, if I open this up, this is an Electron-based app. And it's just going to show the, the apps that I've built on Treeline I.O. I'm going to start one up now because it takes a second. Um, if I start this, you can see when I actually go into my Kitematic that it's starting a container over here for this app. Now, normally, you know, without a client-side app like this, what you would do is you go to treeline.io, and you have your account on here, and you have whatever apps that you're building, and you build these visually. But then you have this. And this is what drove people crazy and gave me you know, all this customer support burden was how do you get Node installed in your system, then doing npm install. And it's, it's steps, but the steps can always have issues. Oh, it started. Um, whereas with this app, 
it's doing all this stuff for you in the background. Um, you don't have to ever install Node because it comes with Electron. It's built in. Um, so if we look at what this app actually looks like, here, let me close this out here. We can click Edit. This is all within the, the desktop app. And this is like a window into that Treeline server. Um, and we can see the routes. This is building a Sales.js web app for you. Um, our default one, when you just go to, to the slash, loads this page where it says pithy things about your, about your app. And what this is doing is you know, I took my array pick random item part and dragged it out here. And if you open it up, you can see that there's a bunch of different items it can choose from. It picks a random item. And then it displays a home page view. It's just like an HTML view that comes with sales and gives it a couple of variables that go into there. There's the name of the app that's hard coded. And there's the, the response from that pick random item. So if we change this, just put some exclamation marks in there and save it. And then we reload our page. It's going to take a second because it's syncing this stuff down for you in the background. And then you've got your, your stuff here. And let's, let's just for fun make a totally new route here that does something a little bit funner. So let's say we make a new one called DockerCon. And what we're going to want this to do is we're going to fetch the DockerCon web page. So I got my fetch web page on there. It's asking me which URL I want to fetch. So we'll do 2017, whoop, next year's, DockerCon.com. And if I just left this right now, all we do is basically display that web page. But let's do something more interesting. We can translate that HTML into Pig Latin. This is one of the more important machines that comes built with Treeline. And it's asking which HTML do I want to translate. So I can go select these variables, and here's the, the result of the previous machine. And we save that. And it'll probably take a second here to update. And in the background, again, this is installing NPM modules. It's got all of our ports and stuff open for us. It's doing all the environment variables for us. Um, it's got to load the page. Come on, people, we're waiting. And oh, I see it. It's coming. The big reveal. Yep, there it is. This is really hard to look at. Akrakande is a hete immunity k and a container k. So anyways, I think you get the idea. It's, um, this is an app that when you download it and run it, if you don't have Docker, it installs Docker for you. And it's, it pulls the latest container image of this Treeline preview server and runs it for you. It's going to you know, give you a volume on your computer that has all the files in it. It actually creates, so this is created on my computer. This is an actual Sales.js app that was created by Treeline. It's got a Docker file in there for you, so you can actually build this into a container, deploy it anywhere with Docker Cloud and you know, Docker Swarm, where you can press this build button and have it Dockerize it for you and push it up as an image. And you know the, the idea is kind of cradle to grave development. Like this makes Sales.js apps, but it could make anything. It can make a Go app. It doesn't. You know, at the end of the day, if you're not looking at the code, it doesn't really matter what it's making. Um, let me get back into our presentation here for a second. Ooh. Lost my mouse. There we go. So the next steps for a tool like this would be to, to integrate everything in there. You know, front-end design tools like something like Webflow, um, configuration for your apps, for databases and things like that, um, and then like the one-click Dockerization and deployment to put it up into the cloud. Um, if you're interested in this kind of stuff, uh, there's a couple of links if you download this, uh, this keynote that has links to the different technologies that I used. And uh, that's about it. I don't know how much time we have. Do we have any questions? Anybody? Anybody? All right. Well, I think we're good. It's drinking time, I guess. I'm the last, last one of the day. So y'all take care. Thank you.